Hello everybody, welcome back to FTC Coding with Gent Semi from Team 6335, Kirtland Hornets. Last episode we wrote a hardware class that mapped out the motors of our robot. And today we're going to be putting this class to use. So, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, go back to your Team Code folder. And we're going to make a new Java class for our Teleop. Let's call this um, Teleop Tutorial. Excellent. All right. So, first of all, we're going to want to, above our class, put a Teleop annotation. As so, so at Teleop, it'll do the import for you there. Um, name equals, I would just name this the same as your class, so teleop tutorial, and then there's another tag called group that typically I just keep the same throughout the uh, entire project, so I would just name that tutorial or whatever your robot's name is, and I would keep that the same through this and your autonomous and any other programs that you write. Then obviously we're going to want to make this class extend op mode. There we go. All right. So as you can see, it's throwing an error because we need to add some stuff. Some methods we're gonna have to put in include at override public void init. public void and loop oh my bad that has an underscore there another override for public void start and a final at override for and I believe the proper name is just loop. All right. So, um, before we put any of these methods to use, we're going to want to uh, make a reference to our hardware class that we wrote. So I would, at the top of these, put hardware tutorial robot is what I would call it equals new hardware tutorial. And if we go back to our hardware class, we can see that we asked for an op mode, uh, run mode in the constructor. Uh, in this case, let's say we don't want to use encoders for our op mode for whatever reason. We just do run mode dot run without encoder. And now we have a reference to our robot. So, um, another thing that I would include if you ever want to make use of is private elapsed time. I just call that runtime. This is the uh, the way that all the example op modes um, keep track of the runtime and the op mode for certain timed queues or whatever you need to use that for. I personally only use an autonomous but it could be useful in this case as well. So, public void init. So this is whenever um, this is whenever the op mode is initialized. So in this case, we want to also initialize a robot. So if you remember back in our hardware class, we have an init method, and we want to access that from here and run it. So we want to robot dot init, and every op mode class has a hardware map by default. And that's what we'll pass in. So hardware map right there. I also like to add a little thing to the telemetry. Telemetry, my bad. I don't know how to pronounce that. And the telemetry is basically the little um, fragments of data you can see on the driver station phone. And uh, in this case, I just like to say um, 
initial uh, can't spell initialization complete oh actually what telemetry needs is two fields basically the way telemetry works is um, data label and then the actual uh, value of that label so so if the robot initializes successfully without problems we'll see that the telemetry will say initialization is complete at the bottom of our driver station so init loop is a method that I have not yet found any use for I'm sure if you look around on the forums you could find something for it but at the moment um, I've never used that method and it's not necessary so leave that empty for now if we take a look at elapsed time up here the elapsed time will keep on counting up even after the op mode is done to prevent that from happening we want to go ahead and run time dot reset whenever we start our robots op mode and finally the loop function is where all of our code is going to be going so let's go ahead and do this we want to access our robot as such so we want to do robot dot right motor dot set power oops and basically what motors do is they can take a power value from negative one to positive one negative one would change the direction zero is no power and positive one is forward so let's say we want to get input from the controllers since you know this is a this is an op mode, this is to be used at Teleop, you have to drive the robot. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the gamepad 1, which is the driver gamepad, or whatever whatever gamepad that you assign us first in the driver station. Oops. Bye-bye. I want to get the left stick Y. So what that'll do is the right motor will be controlled by the uh, vertical offset of the left stick on the first gamepad. So, uh, actually what we would want to do in this case would probably be to make that on the left motor. Um, so say we have uh, our robot that we assign two motors to, our left motor and our right motor, and we want to drive it like a tank. So one stick on the controller controls one tra one wheel, my bad, and the other stick on the controller controls the other. Basically what we would do is get the value of the gamepad sticks and assign them to our motors. Because a motor takes a value from negative one to one, uh, the left and right stick on gamepads also go from negative one to one on whatever axis you are using. So that's going to let's say let's say we pull the left stick all the way down and the right stick all the way up. The left motor will have a power of negative one and it'll go backwards and the right motor will have a power of positive one and it'll go forwards. So our robot would basically spin in circles. Okay, so that is probably the most basic teleop we can possibly do right now. If you have uh, a more complex setup, say with four motors, and then you need to also use the second gamepad as well, in that situation, which is kind of rare, you could just say robot dot whatever motor. Oh, I can't believe this. Whatever motor dot set power. And then there's also a gamepad 2. So let me take a look at all the gamepad controls. If we take a look at the gamepad class, we can see that there is left stick and right stick X and Y values, Boolean values for the D-pad. So uh, all of them are set to false when they're not being pressed on. But if you do press on them, then it turns out to be true. Same thing with the A, B, X, and Y buttons. Bumpers as well have the Boolean values. And if you're pressing down on the sticks, 
There's also Boolean values for those. The left trigger and right trigger start at zero, but as you press down on them, they get closer and closer to one. So if they're all the way pressed down, they have value of one. So you can also use that for, let's say, a servo that should probably move faster depending on how hard you press on it. So what if we have a servo and we want to move it as our trigger gets pressed? Well, let's head over to our hardware class. And up here, we will add a public servo. Servo. I'll set that to null. And down here, we'll say servo equals map dot servo dot get. Let's say servo. So make sure, again, whatever servo you are getting from the config, the name matches. And then down here, we want to say servo dot set direction. You can also set the direction forward or reverse for your servo. You would want to set the position to zero. This ensures that every time the robot is initialized, the servo goes back to the zero position, it's the default position. So, what can we do with the servo? Well, so we can access it through our robot as well, since we added it to the hardware class. Robot.servo.setPosition. Um, servos, to my knowledge, typically go from zero to one. I'm not sure if they can go um, to negative one as well, or even further than that. But essentially, what you would want to do to change your servo's position is, let's say we wanted to use that uh, left trigger. So when we're not pressing on the trigger at all, our servo would be at its default position. And as we would pr keep pressing down the trigger, our servo would keep moving to its extended position. And once we let go of the trigger, it would revert back. And that is how you would use a servo. Thank you for watching this episode of my FTC basic programming tutorial for the 2016-2017 season. Hope you enjoyed, and next time I will be making a video on how to update the SDK to incorporate new features added by FTC. See you next time.